Hey there, I'm Lance and I'm a gamer. And I'm Sam and I'm a non-gamer. And we are Love to Hate, where we try to help gamers find great games to play with non-gamers. And today we're taking a look at Flaming Pyramids by Cheeky Parrot Games. Flaming Pyramids is a tile laying game in which you make a pyramid that is flaming. Um, this is a game in which you are going to have a stack of tiles that you are trying to be the first player to get rid of all of your tiles. And uh, there's going to be certain rules about where you can place tiles and how they stay on top of each other. Let me show you how it works down below and then we'll come back and share thoughts on it as a gamer and non-gamer. All right, so here's Flaming Pyramids on the table. Let me show you guys how this tile laying game works. And in this game, you are just going to have tiles. You are going to have 40 tiles here, and these tiles are going to be uh, different things, different colors, going to have different numbers on them. As you can see, some are going to be newspapers or furniture, um, and then you're going to have big heavy appliances, and uh, you are going to have some dangerous flammable objects such as this lighter here, and that's indicated by the flame right here. Um, and what you're really paying attention to on these tiles, uh, not only what the actual tile is, such as these newspapers here, but the color, the background color, and the number in the corners. Uh, that's very important. Now, how this is going to work, you're going to divvy up the tiles evenly amongst the players. And if there is a leftover amount that will not give everybody an even number, then that tile, th that tile or tiles are going to be in the middle, and that's going to be the starting playing area. Uh, and in this case, you would not have a flammable object be the starting one. Let's say it's this one right here. And so we have this heavy appliance. I'm going to move these tiles off frame here. This really heavy appliance. And I say it's heavy because the number here tells you how much that object weighs. And that's very important. The, the theme here, I didn't explain the theme of this game. The, uh, the city is having a uh, a garage sale. They're getting rid of the things that they don't want anymore. They're putting it out on the curb, trying to get rid of stuff. And uh, they've created this big old pile. And uh, some of the stuff is flammable and it causes fires to, to break out and collapses to happen because you're putting heavy things on top of lighter things. And so this is a very dangerous situation here for the city, the residents here. Um, and real quick note, this is a new edition of this game. You may already be familiar with Flaming Pyramids. It came out in 2018. This is the second edition. It is new for 2022. So back to the game here. Uh, you're going to have a starting tile or tiles, and you're going to evenly distribute the stack of tiles as best as you can. And then players will take their stack and they will mix them up, shuffle them up, and they will draw five off the top of the stack and that will be their hand. So maybe I have something like this. And so what I am trying to do is I'm trying to play tiles on top of other tiles or to the side of tiles, depending on uh, how many are out here. And uh, I need to be able to place a tile on top of another tile that matches in color, number, or um, I can place one that it, the number does not want, to, I don't want to exceed the combination of the two numbers underneath. That'll make more sense here in just a second. But as it is, I only have one out here right now. And when you have one, you can place a tile on either side. And so I'm just going to place this one here. And then it would be the next player's turn. And anytime you have two tiles touching each other with nothing above it, then the next person has to place their tile above those two tiles. So let's say it's the next player's turn and uh, this is their hand. And so we've got a red, a yellow, and we've got 120. So I can either match the colors or match the number. But whatever I place up here cannot exceed 120 because 100 plus 20 is 120, and that is how much this spot can hold. If I place something that's heavier than 120, then it's a collapse is going to happen. So looking at my tiles here, I have two choices. I can place this red one because it matches in color and 40 does not exceed the weight of 120, so that would be a good placement. Alternatively, I could place this green 20 with the furniture here because 20 matches 20. Even though the colors don't match, that would still work. And so let's go with that. I place that, and I would draw back up to five, drawing from my stack, and that would be my turn. And it would go back to the next player, and turns are just going to go back and forth, back and forth, 
And uh, in this situation, I would have to place one on the sides again because there's no spot to place something above something else. You don't place one tile directly above another tile. So I would maybe do something like this, and then it would go back to the next player, and they would have to place right here. Again, matching colors, numbers, and not exceeding the combination of the two numbers underneath. Now, let's say that somebody places a flammable object, and we're going to say that uh, they did that there, and it comes to me, and I would have to place something up here. Now, obviously, this is not a valid placement. It would create mayhem because I am placing something that does not match the color nor the numbers. Anytime that happens, then a collapse is going to occur, and you, what you would do is you would take the two tiles that are underneath, and you would have to turn them face down and put them on the bottom of your stack. The whole goal in this game is to deplete your stack of tiles first. Get rid of your junk. Um, so that would not be a move that I'd want to do. But if I had to, if I had no other tiles, let's say, again, these tiles would go on the bottom of my stack. And then this one would come down and I would choose where I place it. Would I place it here or would I place it there? And uh, where you place it is important because maybe it creates a further collapse and more mayhem and you would have to take more tiles. So it's something you want to pay attention to when you are playing the tile. Now, back to the flammable part of this. Uh, like I said, there are some tiles that are flammable. We have lighters, but there are also, uh, here's another lighter. lighter. There are also uh, blow torches, and that's not good at all because blow, blow torches will not only ignite newspapers, they will also ignite furniture items, anything wood. And so we'll explain that here in just a second, but I want to show you the, uh, the lighter here. If uh, we had this combination, let's say, for instance, uh, again, I know these aren't necessarily valid placements, but I just want to show you what the lighter does. If you place a lighter touching any newspapers, then those newspapers burn up and they go to the bottom of your stack, something that you don't want. Um, they don't necessarily create a collapse unless you're burning stuff below you and then things fall. Uh, but newspapers will burn or lighters will burn up newspapers. As mentioned earlier, uh, blow torches will ignite newspapers as well as furniture. And anytime you put two flammable objects right next to each other, it's going to create an explosion and you're going to have to take all the tiles that are touching those tiles and they would all go to the bottom of your stack. Not good. Now, anytime you do light something on fire, the, the tiles that created the fire, they are going to get discarded out of the game. You're not going to have to take those but uh, that will create a lot of damage. Now, I do also want to point out, if I can find it real quick, that there is one tile in the game that is very heavy, uh, and it is almost certainly going to cause you problems as it's going to need to be placed on the bottom, and that's this 200 pound uh, uh, weight here, dumbbell. And so you are definitely going to want to try to make sure that this is on the bottom because not only is it 200 pounds, but it's uh, it's own, it's it's one color, it's not going to match colors with anything else. And so it's going to create a lot of mayhem and collapses. Again, the first player to deplete their hand of tiles is going to be the winner. And that's how you play Flaming Pyramids. Let's go back up top and share our thoughts on this one. And we're back. And now we're going to share our thoughts on Flaming Pyramids from a gamer and non-gamers perspective. So Sam, uh, first impressions, you've got a lot of tiles in this game, lots of colors. Uh, numbers, what do you think about this one, seeing it on the table? Well, I love laying tiles, so okay. tile laying games are my forte. As, uh, as they are for me, this yes. is a, a genre of game that tends to work pretty well in our household. Yes, yes. And so what did you uh, think going into this one and learning the rules and wrapping your head around it? I mean, I think at, just initially when you think pyramid, you think more up, and I just okay. was wondering okay. how that's going to work, and then obviously it's... <laughs> Two, yeah, this is a two D, not a three D. <laughs> That's just what I was thinking. Okay. Um, but no, I mean it's it was very easy to understand the concept of it. It's it's numbers. It's mm -hmm. making sure you're not going over, you know, a sum of two numbers. Um, right. You know, it 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 makes sense how much stuff weighs. You want lighter stuff on top, heavier stuff on the bottom. So it, it's pretty straightforward. Um, I think there was a little bit of hesitation when you couldn't make it work and the pyramid would crumble. Lance had to kind of guide a little bit more on this is where you, you have to put a tile. I think that part could get, okay, uh, be a little confusing. 
it was our, I mean, this was our first time playing it. So. Right. What you're seeing is the first time playing it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I will agree with that. Learning the rules for this game, it's not a difficult, complicated game, but when you get into it and a collapse happens or, or mayhem happens, as it says in the rule book, then you do kind of have to stop and really, you know, look at the whole picture and you do have to kind of just examine yeah. everything because it's easy to make Near mistakes. Near the end, in this I was understanding a little bit more like, okay, collapse is here. This is where you want to start yeah. building from. But it, it t takes a little bit of... It, it, you pause the game for just a bit, yeah. trying to make sure that you, you did everything right. And unless you're just a seasoned veteran at this game and you've played it several times, it will be a thing where you will have to kind of yeah. examine every little thing about it and say, okay, we did that right here. We did that right here. Oh, shoot, we messed this up. Let's yeah. fix it real quick. That's going to be a thing with this game. Now, I don't know that that makes the game no. bad or anything. I no. think it's just something you'd have to be aware of. Yeah. Um, now... I do think the collapses, the mayhem is an interesting thing with this game because even when you mess things up, like you, you may be forced to have to mess things up because you yeah. just have a bad hand of tiles. But even when you mess things up, there's still strategy involved in the sense of, okay, how do I make this work out as best as can for me? Yeah. Like, how do I minimize the damage here? What do you think about that? Yeah, I I don't think I really thought it through that much. Okay. Um, but I won, so I obviously thought it through <laughs> a little bit better than other people that won. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, but I don't think I just I I don't think I I collapsed the pyramid very often, maybe only one time during the game. So uh -huh. I think I just <laughs> you play better than you ought to worry about that. <laughs> I will speak to you this better, because I guess I do have more experience cards. with it. Um, but no, there is definitely a factor of trying to figure out what is the least uh, damaging situation. Yeah. What's the best, uh, you know, what, 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 what's the cliche saying? The, be, the, 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 when stuck with two bad choices to take the one that's the, the lesser of the two evils or something like that. I'm terrible with the uh, sayings, but yeah, that saying, that you know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, you really have to do that with this game. You have to weigh your options and figure out what is the best option for you. Um, I think the game probably shines a little bit better at bigger player counts um, than, than at a two-player count like what you saw in the video there. Um, the reason for that is, is just more people are going to be adding tiles to the pyramid. It's going to produce a little more chaos, a little more... See, I'm uh, like, two, it's good. I don't need, <laughs> I, I don't need more chaos, I, but I, well, I would agree. I say chaos. That. I think it's just more action is what yeah. I mean. I don't mean randomness. I mean, you know, more yeah. things are happening. So, uh, and I think that's a good thing. I think, you know, that, that really makes it more exciting. But as a two-player game, it was still fun. Yeah, it was really still an enjoyable it. experience, yeah. so... Well, let's get to our pros and cons for Flaming Pyramids. What were the things that stood out to you in a good way as a non-gamer? I mean, I just it's a pretty quick game, um, and I, I like the, the little bit of chaos that it adds with the collapsing of the pyramids. I think it it's just enough. I think it's a really good game for non-gamers. I think it's enough strategy to keep a gamer involved and excited about it and it's quick enough that if you, either one of you don't really like it it's it's over pretty quickly okay so i think it really is a great it's small it's a great travel game yes yeah. um it doesn't take up a whole lot of space i mean depending on how big your pyramid gets but not a tremendous amount of space so i think it's just a good nice little game to have on the shelf yeah i'll agree with all of those points and and to what sam was saying about there's enough strategy there. I think the interesting thing with this game, probably the, the thing I like about it the most is, is that you don't realize how quickly the game can wrap up. Yeah. And what I mean is, is you have these tiles and you're getting them out and then you're drawing a few more and you see that your stack's getting small and you're watching everybody else's stack. And then it's like one person's turn and then boom, they're down to one tile left. Yeah. And then it's it's kind of like Uno in a sense where, you know, you have the one card and everybody's paying attention to that person with the one card. And they're like, oh, no. Except you weren't. We've we, 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 we got to figure <laughs> out how to, you know, screw this person over. And then, you know, something happens. Yeah. Um, I was the person with one tile and then out of nowhere, Sam is able to end the game. So it's something that, you know, just kind of, it catches you by surprise in yeah. this game. And you do have to be observant how the game is unfolding. So that's pretty good. What doesn't work for you so great as a non-gamer? I wish that the fire cards were bright red. 
Um, okay. I think that we would play them, and this happened at the very beginning, and we didn't notice till later. We would play a fire card, but we were so focused on the numbers on them that we didn't realize it was a fire card yeah. because all the cards have something different on them. So I wish it was bright red or orange or something that drew your eye yeah. to it a little bit yeah. more so that you you really recognize what it is. I'll, I'll agree with that 100%. And now it does have the icon in the bottom yeah. corner, but that the icon, it can be small. It's small and it can be easy to miss. If it were something that, you know, was distinguished and stood out like a bright Yeah, I just think the fact that we did miss it. Or we, we did a couple rounds and we realized that one of us had yeah. played and we didn't know who it was and we just kind of passed over and it. And we were like, so. well, we can't really do anything about yeah. it now, so let's just move yeah, forward. Yeah, because that's the thing too. It's a pyramid. You yeah. can't go back and, and retrace right. steps. Yeah. And again, Going back to kind of what we said in the beginning, you're, you're, you, it's easy to make mistakes in this game. And I think that is something that you could walk away from it feeling like, well, my win was an asterisk because we made a mistake and it didn't, yeah. it wasn't true to the rule book or I lost because of this. And if we would have played by the rules, then, you know, you know, it's easy to kind of have that happen with this game. Um, but I will say it's 20 minutes, it's yeah. quick and easy, it's lighthearted, don't take it too seriously. Yeah. I don't think those mistakes are something that really ruins the game. Yeah, I agree. All right, scale of 1 to 10, love to hate. Where does Flaming Pyramids come in for you? Um, I really enjoyed this game. I think just how fast it was and how simple it was to, to, to play. But it wasn't just a card game either. Because a lot of times when you think simple, it's going to be kind of a card game mm -hmm. uh, so i liked it. it was a simple tile laying game um i i liked it i'd probably give it a 7.8 really wow okay you liked it a lot then yeah all right um I'm, a, I'm lower than that than you are um but i do think the game is really good at what it's trying to do um you know it is a uh, lighter tile laying game that has some uniqueness to it the stacking and the matching of colors similar to uno um, trying to get rid of these tiles. It's a, it's a familiar feel to it. Um, and, and it's kind of a game that, like I mentioned earlier, it, it has some surprises to it and unfolds in some shocking ways. And, and because of that, it's one that I want to get back to the table and keep playing. Yeah. It's maybe a little too light for my liking as something that I would play often, but playing with a non-gamer or casual gamer, I think it's a pretty good game at that. So I'm going to give it a 7.1, just a notch above 7.0. Um, something that I would be happy to get to the table and play anytime you were wanting to play or any other casual gamer. So, uh, well, there you have it. It's Flaming Pyramids. It is from Cheeky Parrot Games. Uh, go check it out. Leave us some comments down below. Let us know what you think about this game. Make sure to like, subscribe, and push that bell button so you get notifications of all our new content. I'm Lance. I'm Sam. And we are Love to Hate, where we try to bridge the gap between gamers and non-gamers. We'll catch you next time.